And all along, is the YouTube and the success you're having on YouTube creating more status for you within your local proximity? Meaning mm -hmm. now it's not just a girl at school that you're interested in. Right. Now, now you have your your kind of yes. pick of yes. whoever you mm -hmm. want to talk to mm -hmm. and women are approaching you or is it as you're out in your community, you're a high status, high power individual in the eyes of other people? No, it's definitely like women are coming to me. I was always like the shy type. I, okay. I did not know how to talk to girls. I still don't know how to talk to girls. I just I just learned how to flirt with my wife. <laughs> I'm kidding. But um, <laughs> she would be like, man, he lying. He know how to. But um, no, yeah, it was it was definitely like now I had that that added level of attraction that I'm somebody that's popular. Yep. Um, and so me in my eyes, I kind of grew up with a low self-esteem mm -hmm. just because of a lot of the stuff that I've been through and romantics. Like, like I, I had a low self-esteem, so I didn't really see it. Mm -hmm. Like even in school before, like you, I was like super booming on YouTube. Like I had a friend and he was like, oh, like, you know, all of these girls, like, or whatever, they're talking about you. They're trying to get at you. And I would think he was messing with me because that's how you would do in middle school. Like, oh, so-and-so like you, mm -hmm. she don't like you. Mm. And I went, you know, I went from going to school in the hood to going to school that was like a performance art school, like mm -hmm. real quirky. So it was different environment entirely, but I digress. So, you know, when I didn't just, I just didn't believe like, oh, people are going to come at me because I'm more popular. Mm -hmm. I just saw myself as a regular person because mm -hmm. I was. The only difference is I just made videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I was just a kid still living in the hood, still mm -hmm. in the same financial situation, still on food stamps, still mm -hmm. living in Section 8, mm -hmm. seeing the same passed out, you know, drug addicts in the street that I've see been seeing every day. Mm -hmm. What's different, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I didn't see myself as like, mm -hmm. oh, these people are now going to come after me Yeah, yeah what, because what, of this. What an interesting experience you're having in terms of like you're raised in a christian home your parents are together and love each other they love jesus you have that foundation but you get popping as a as a very young individual with immense access to influence and status and then you're going to this performing arts school mm -hmm. and now people are approaching you because you're a high status person right. in that circle but with it, within school it didn't really happen so much in school. It was okay. more so online. Okay, okay. So and, you're meeting mm, people online that didn't want to meet in exactly, person. Exactly. Okay, exactly. Gotcha. Which is which is crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which is crazy. Like now as as an adult, you don't just go meeting random people online unless they're Ruslan. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm here with you now, right? <laughs> to be fair, we had quite a bit of a conversation for I mean how, how a couple months nah, we've yeah, been yeah, chatting. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like we chat and then yeah, you're flying you, out. I'm here. messing yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um no, I'm just being facetious, but you know, uh, you know, just, but I guess it, it kind of is a normal thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's New York city. People make friends online all yep, the time. Yep. And there's this idea of stranger danger that was kind of like pushed during the MySpace era that yep. didn't really play out mm. because for the most part, so many people meet most of their friends online now. Yep, yep. Like most of the time people were friends in high school. And then after high school, it's just like, I'm done. You never mm -hmm. see them again. So people felt closer to people that was online. Mm -hmm. I don't have any friends really that like from 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 high school, mm -hmm. like people mm -hmm. that maybe hit me up and see how I'm doing like once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. But friends, friends, yeah. no, those yeah. were just like online. And most of your interactions were online. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I was chronically online. Mm -hmm. So that's how most of the interaction would happen. Yeah. And yeah. now you have a skewed perception because, you know, me based on what you see on the social media page. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a real, mm. there's something that's missing there. Because you're performing on your YouTube. Like, right. what you're doing mm. is, is a form of performance art. Right. Even your rants or your skits, like, that's still a performance to a right. certain extent. And that's the perception mm. people have of but, you. But I didn't see it that way. Uh -huh. That's the funny thing. I think that's what, that's what gravitates a lot of people toward the content that I used to make because uh -huh. I just saw it as me just talking uh -huh. and being myself uh -huh. And people hating in the comments, like calling me gay, calling me the N word, calling yeah. me all types of crazy stuff. And I just didn't care. I mean, look at one of the most viral videos I, I made. I don't give a F or mm -hmm. whatever. I mean, that's a testament to kind of like the mentality that I had. Mm -hmm. I would just go on there, say how I felt about something. Mm -hmm. And to me, it wasn't really a performance. That was gotcha. that was an outlet for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, it was a hobby for me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get on YouTube and make a business out of this. So mm -hmm. I'm going to get on YouTube and... The skits and all of that stuff came after the fact. Mm. You know, the skits and all of that came from me seeing other YouTubes doing that. I'd be like, oh, I want to do one of those for fun. Mm. The filming stuff and getting into cameras and all of that, they came after the fact. Got you. So okay. you can see kind of the progression of how one of my film series, My Way, super cringe. <laughs> you see the first episode versus the 
fourth episode, you're like, oh, wow, the first one is just like, this is just him wanting to make something cool that he mm-hmm. liked. And then the fourth one is like, oh, he's actually trying to like do cinematography, actually trying to direct something. Was this when YouTube still had the uh, YouTube centers, the creator yeah. spaces, right? Because we had one in L.A. I A went to it once. That. And then it shut down right yeah, after, after the COVID. pandemic. Yeah, yeah. And so you did you did you ever like go up there? And yeah, like, I yes. used to love it in there. When yeah. I was 18, that was like my prime as far as just popping out content. Because mm-hmm. I would be in the YouTube space. They open at 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. I was there from 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. to 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. I would get myself a suite, sit in the editing room mm-hmm. and say, hmm, what am I gonna do today? Am I gonna, you know, make a video? Like, am I gonna shoot or am I gonna edit? And I'll just sit there, edit everything. Mm-hmm. They had snacks, water, everything. That, mm-hmm. that I'm so that, sad. I wish they brought that me. back because that was fire. That gave a lot because you had to have like I think I think it was ten thousand subscribers and you can like book things and if you had five a hundred thousand subscribers you got more access yeah, and more exactly. credits. Yeah, I I was just getting started and then like I think I cracked my ten thousand subs and then they shut it down like right around the mm-hmm. same time I cracked my ten. And subs. they also raised the tier because more and more people were hitting those right, those right, milestones. So. Right. It's like now at a hundred thousand you can only book this or that. Right, now right. you needed a million. Right. So right. yeah. So yeah. at what point are you like really starting to dabble in not just sexual immorality, but full on like you become this kind of like leftist voice online? Because mm-hmm. there's also your ideology sh- had to have shifted to some degree, right? And so, somewhat, you can yeah. say, yeah. Mm-hmm. What, and, and so the, what, which came first, the ideology shift of kind of what's mainstream now, right? Mm-hmm. Or was it the lifestyle, and now let me find an ideology that fits the that lifestyle. That fits the lifestyle. Yeah. Hmm. That's a, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Like, yeah. to try to find, like, I think it was more so what social media kind of does or po- political, po- politically wise, is like this is your personality. This is who you are, mm-hmm. right? And it'll kind of shrink. You, like within this box, mm-hmm. are like certain things that are important to you. It's not everything, but it's just certain things that are important to you, mm-hmm. right? And so social media algorithmically kind of just shrinks your personality into this mm-hmm. little tiny thing. Mm-hmm. And so now you're just the leftist YouTuber. Mm. You're not just... Because you might have one or two things that you were like, oh, yeah, they're right on this. Yes. And then that becomes your whole identity. Yes. Yeah. They just show you... It's kind of like what I say all the time. The algorithm is a mirror. It just shows you more of yourself. Mm. But if you're in a bad mood one day and you say, a white guy got me upset today, why is that? Mm-hmm. And you go looking for videos like that, you're not going to just... It's not going to just be a moment anymore. Now it's... You're going to keep getting videos talking mm-hmm. about why white people suck. Yeah, <laughs> and did it's you, gonna keep did you ever really you search that like why no yeah. no no but just just you know just to simplify things yeah. when you look up you know stuff on racism yeah, stuff yeah, like that yeah um i've always been like open-minded mm-hmm. or re- receptive to like various different perspectives mm-hmm. and thoughts mm-hmm. and usually conservatives or not to put it plain, to put it plainly, no offense to anyone that's a conversation. Usually conservative, just like this is the truth and this is the way life should be. Mm. Right. Whereas liberals, they're just like everyone is valid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So to me, I'm like, everything is valid, even if I don't disagree, even if I disagree with it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like mm-hmm. I can disagree with you, mm-hmm. but it could still be like valid and I can try to understand you even mm-hmm. if I don't agree with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think now it's kind of turned into Everything is valid. Like everyone else is valid. And if someone else says that everything is not valid, they're not valid, mm-hmm. which is a kind of it's it's a paradox. Mm-hmm. Right. It's it's kind of like how I describe like when it comes to a lot of LGBT issues, a lot of it is I want you to accept me and I want you to tolerate my life mm-hmm. and how I'm living. But I won't tolerate how you think life should go. Mm-hmm. Like you expressing your views and how you think life should go, I'm not going to tolerate that. But I expect you to tolerate my intolerance mm-hmm. of you. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. this weird kind of yeah. that I'm still <laughs> trying to figure out yeah, I mean, how well, that happens. I think I think what happens is you've heard of the idea that like the Overton window and what's yes, acceptable. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I think I think what happened is the Overton window shifted further left with regards to like sexual liberation, mm-hmm. and now it was no longer. Like, the, I remember when I was younger, like, the gay people that I had interactions with who more or less, like, look, we just want to be left alone. Right. Like, just leave us alone. Mm-hmm. Let's just, you know, now it's shifted to, like, no, 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 no. Like, you have to 
affirm mm -hmm. that what we're doing is the same right. as or or better than a heteronormative relationship mm -hmm. and um, um a, a nuclear family. So now it's not just you have to accept, you now have to affirm. Right. right now, it's like tolerance to acceptance to affirmation. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then you're a bigot. Right. Which is like the average person is just non combative mm -hmm. and doesn't want to have no smoke. So now it's like, all right, well, I don't want to be a bigot. I want to be mm -hmm. that. So I guess mm -hmm. I affirm. This? And it's not just being a bigot. You yeah. can there's a social media clause in a lot of just regular jobs. Mm. I remember back when I worked at Walmart, there was a social media clause. You can get really? fired for the things you say on the internet if they deem it to be offensive. Wow. So it's not just words. It's not just oh we disagree. Mm. It's it's now you are doing the very thing that that the other side has done. Like you've yep. become the enemy mm -hmm. because at some point in time mm -hmm. and in certain in certain states, it's still a thing mm -hmm. where you can get discriminated against like for a job opportunity mm -hmm. because you're gay or because you're trans. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now you can't just like sit at a desk and type because you're gay or you're trans. What they got to do with, you know, being right. a secretary, you right. know? Right, right, right. But, but now, now they're doing yeah, the opposite. The opposite. Yeah. Now it's yeah. the opposite yeah. where it's like, if you don't call me by my pronouns, you got, you got five times to get it right. Mm -hmm. And if you get it wrong, <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I've heard this. Yeah. I don't remember if it was my wife or a friend of mine where they were working and somewhere there was someone that had they, them pronouns. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you got you got three chances by the third time. It's an HR report, bro. Oh my god! You misgender somebody after three times. Yeah. It's like nah, you doing that on purpose. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like, bruh. Yeah. I've been talking like this my whole life. Yeah. And you think in a week? Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. get my act together to to, yeah. to talk how you want me to yeah. talk. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's wild. And Jordan Peterson, that's one thing that I definitely ag agreed with him on when he went through that whole controversy mm -hmm. where like he had all those college kids like banging on his door, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's like. There's no, there's no evidence that using the right pronouns is gonna, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I, I was like, it's it's crazy that if somebody just refuses to just partake in your life, right. and your views, yep. now all of a sudden they're invalid. Yeah. And Did you ever go that far into the the your ideology at the time? Did, mm -hmm. Were you holding those positions as well? Not on some like, look, I'm gonna explore and be polyamorous mm -hmm. and whatever, but that like. I'm going, and if you don't affirm me, mm -hmm. now you're now you're a bigot and you're bad. Were you ever all the way on that end of the no, spectrum? Okay. No, because okay. by the time, like, what's funny about me being non-binary, um, that's when I was already like pretty much off YouTube by by that point. Like, okay. I remember there was like maybe three videos, and within those last three or four videos, that's when I had like told people like, yeah, I'm non-binary, but I had mm -hmm. already been non-binary through that. That was something that was kind of like personal and private to me for the most part. Um, but then people would ask questions and I was just like, yeah, if you see me dressed in this certain way, that that's why. Mm -hmm. And so that was like something that was private to me. That was something that like I feel like or I felt like that's not something that I'm going to impose on somebody else. Mm -hmm. Right. Like mm -hmm. I'll tell somebody, hey, these are my pronouns. Mm -hmm. If they messed it up, you know, or if they chose not to use those mm -hmm. pronouns, how am I going to tell my family? Oh, yeah, I don't want you calling me this. Mm. So there were times where you had preferred pronouns. However, your family would not use them. Was that right, real? Right. Wow. What were your pronouns at the time? They them. They them. Okay. But, but they. It's hard to explain to to a Hispanic family <laughs> what they them is <laughs> when the entire language is gendered. Yeah. 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 They try to do something where they said Latinx. Latinx. I remember <laughs> or, that. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. Ax. Yeah. It, I'm like, what is Ax? It's yeah. still it. it, it no, yeah. it doesn't work. Like yeah. it's a gendered language, even yeah. like la radio. Yeah. It's not unity. So it's it's Hey, thank you so much for checking out the video. Comment down below and let me know what you think. And be sure to check out this video that YouTube is recommending just for you. Let me know if they nailed it. All right. I'll see you over there. Peace.